Saint, about 20 of us were called down to our guidance counselor's office. The purpose was unknown. Most of us thought we were in trouble. Well, a few, but they were receiving an award. As I looked around the guidance office, waiting for my name to be called, I saw familiar faces, though they were schoolmates I barely knew. They were known for their intelligence and talents in academics, and knowing that I'm going to talk about to the school, the thought, um, the thought of that I was going to be expelled for being too noisy in class was eliminated. Although my expulsion was, theory was out, I still, I still walked toward Mr. Johnson's office with a rapid pulse and a clenched fist. And, I, and as I sat in front of his desk, our beloved guidance counselor looked at me with a smile on his face, like he was about to inform me that I had won a million dollars. He told me that I was in fact a winner, but not a million dollars, unfortunately, but of something of much greater value, free tertiary education. In 2009, in January of 2009, 14 of us who scored adequately on the PSA or CPT, sophomores at the time, waited in a spare classroom of our high school, wondering what our teachers, I mean professors, were going to be like. Sure, most of us had taken advanced placement classes in the past, though we knew that college success and psychology were going to be different. And they were different. The level of intellectual expectations from our professors, the way we were taught, made us feel like real college students, which, officially, we were. At precisely 1.15 p.m., a man, laptop and syllabi in hand, walked in and introduced himself as Professor Melbourne. This man, a college student himself at the time, was going to teach us how to balance courses, finances, and time efficiently. Never experiencing an educator diving into lessons on the first day put us all in a petrified state that entire class. <laughs> Soon though, the 50 minutes had passed and we were able to breathe freely again. We all turned to one another and expressed our feelings about Professor Milhorn and college success. After surviving our first college class, we were eager to meet our second professor and discover what he or she had in store for us. The first psychology professor was not there, so we didn't remember much about him. The second day, Professor Milhorn taught for both periods. The third day, we had a new psychology professor. He gave off this friendly vibe that we had not really experienced from our high school teachers. He explained to us that a former psychology professor was to undergo an operation and he was his replacement. He introduced himself as Professor Joel Antonio Rivera Turbino Santana Octubre. <laughs> <laughs> professor Rivera for short. After his first day with us, he was already everybody's first favorite guy. I always heard about those third professors you have in college, the ones you never forget, the ones you remember when you look back on your college experience. Well, Professor Rivera was one of those. He really looked like a father to us, and he took the time to get to know everyone, and we all felt like we could go to him if we needed someone to talk to. He was a psychologist, after all. In the five months we had professors Milhorn and Revere, we not only learned about ourselves, but college as well. We ended the school year feeling more confident about the AP classes we would attend and the eight more dual enrollment classes we would take, two of which were intro to computers and freshman English the following year. When we began school this past August, we were again led to the same vacant classroom. It was deja vu when the door opened and a laptop building professor greeted us. Welcome to Introduction to Computers and Technology, Professor Karaskio smiled. Her heels clicked as she walked to the front of the classroom. Her enthusiasm for the course made me immediately dislike Introduction to Computers and Technology. <laughs> Most of us thought we knew everything about the internet and Windows until we met Professor Karaskio. She brought forth facts about computers that are crucial, but unknown to every 21st century teenager whose eyes are permanently fixed to their computers or lightweight Mac laptops. In her class, we studied prominent programs such as Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Access. She introduced, she introduced us to the infinite ways we could, do, we could use these programs, surprisingly, in college and business as well. With the knowledge about computers infused into our brains by Professor Karaskio, we are now more confident about our technological conversion. But of all of our professors, the only one who broke my highly accredited belief that first impressions do last was Professor Glenn. She walked in the classroom with a sophisticated poise, with the grandeur of her halo that separated her from us studying us all. And as, she, and as she introduced herself in the class we were enrolled in, with a tone that made us nervous, I thought that she would be one of those terror professors who would not care about her students. Thankfully, I was mistaken. Don't get me wrong though, she gave us a lot of work and we have practiced and understand college reading and writing more than ever with her help. 
we actually hope she comes to class every day because the lengthy book where she says this is so much worse. We would much rather discuss the effects of immigrations or hate crimes or Walmart on the United States. Also, Professor Glenn actually treated us like collegiate young adults rather than high school students, telling us both humorous and morose anecdotes about her life and her family. I guess Professor is sorry women too. Mm -hmm. Through the guidance of our four amazing and unique professors, we have learned more about ourselves and things that are not just important for today, but in our future as well. At both the high school and college levels, adults have told us that it is difficult to succeed in the world today without getting ahead before you leave high school altogether and begin college full time. So we are grateful to have the opportunity to get ahead at the highest level. It has been a memorable and educating experience thus far, and I hope it will continue to be in the future. One of our guidance counselors, and uh, I'm glad to see Dr. Witt here beside me as well, because uh, this was definitely not a, a Craig Horseman idea, a Craig Horseman uh, show or anything like that. Going back to the uh, the origins of, of Leonard High School, actually, this, this idea of having a college campus right across the street from us had us excited. Uh, lots of ideas already flowing before ground, I think, was officially broken next door across the street. but. But I want to give credit to, to those that are not here with us today. Um, Dr. Keith, uh, first president uh, over at HCC South Shore. Dr. Witt, of course. Uh, my predecessor, predecessor of Principal uh, Denny Oast, the uh, uh, inaugural or first principal of, of Leonard High School. And then the, uh, at the time, assistant <coughs> superintendent for curriculum, Dr. Michael Grego. Um, again, this, this was, a, I think, a uh, process that we all kind of put together, all had a little bit of input, and it came together in, in, in the last uh, two years, it, it finally you know came to fruition, and, and we are seeing the fruits of our labor right now with, with two of the individuals that are our students um, looking to get the next group started here uh, in about a month or so when we, when we return for second semester uh, of this school year. Uh, some of the things that, that we've encountered, of course, is, is uh, bureaucratic red tape, but along with with that, we also have uh, come up with some ideas that worked for Leonard High School and HCC South Shore um, that, that have worked very well for us. There, there's been a few stumbling blocks, for example, how do we get our students across the street? <laughs> um, originally, we started with uh, a bus driver that was a, an assistant teacher on our campus. Uh, she'd load up the uh, 15 or so students on the bus, drive the 1.5 miles across the street, <laughs> drop them off, come back to our campus, finish her duties on our campus, go pick them up at the end of the day and make that uh, drive again. Um, at the beginning of the school year, she resigned to become a teacher at a private school, so we lost our bus driver, then we lost our bus. Uh, <laughs> it, anyway, what we're, what we're working on now is a, a crosswalk on 24th Street between the two campuses, and as we left campus today, the concrete is poured, so we are getting closer and closer uh, every moment, um, and I know our students are excited about actually taking those classes on the campus and, and being a, a real college student and being there on the campus and, and being treated as such. Um, I think I've probably rambled quite a bit. Um, Dr. Witt, Mr. Johnson, anything that you'd like to add, please please join me. Uh, again, I'm Bill Johnson. I'm the guidance counselor that works with the program. Um, I have probably what I think is the best part of the program because I'm the one that gets to call the kids in. I deal directly with the kids and identifying the ones that are going to be part of the program. And then I'm the one that will sit down and meet with their parents and identify, or, you know, um, work with their parents as far as uh, introducing the program to them. Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, working with these kids uh, and, um, uh, letting, and seeing them grow and mature as students. Um, these uh, students are actually identified by ninth grade PSAT scores uh, to be part of this program. They uh, enter the program in the second semester of their sophomore year where they have the opportunity to uh, pick up or complete six college credits by the end of their sophomore year. Uh, the two young ladies that spoke today are in their junior year now, and by the end of this year they will have earned uh, 12 more credits. Uh, of college credit. By the time they finish their senior year, they will leave high school with 30 college credits. Um, and when you present that to parents, especially these days in the economic times that we're in, uh, it, it very definitely gets their attention. 
Uh, we feel like we've got a tremendous program, um, you know, going with these kids down there. We're getting ready to identify uh, our second group of students, uh, as Mr. Horseman just said. And uh, every year, we will identify a new group of uh, sophomores that will start in the program, and then we will be graduating a group also. And uh, we feel like it's just been a tremendous opportunity for our students, and um, uh, it's been a real you know, privilege for us to be able to work with uh, you know, the community college across the street. And if uh, anybody has any questions you'd like to you know, ask us, we'll try to answer them for you. Yeah, I, I, first of all, I'm a little intimidated. I know you said you feel so close to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what's the accreditation process? Is this, is this a college? Yeah. We, we, it's our, these are our courses and our science accreditation 